financial water spirits, demons underneath the sea, in the sea rather, in the water, underneath the water. Talk about financial water spirits. Financial water spirits is, um, these spirits occupy the, the sea area. I want you to hear me very clearly on this. And if you, um, if you could catch me on this, uh, depth, you'll understand why King Jesus did the miracle for Peter of abundance when he was on the boat. Remember Jesus got into Peter's boat and they couldn't catch no fish. And he ended up with the net full of fish so much they had overflow. He couldn't even get it over. And there was wealth of provision unlocked. There was a significance of why Jesus did this miracle of abundance on the waters. It was Jesus saying, I got power over these financial water spirits. If I want to take even stronger on this, remember where King Jesus took the debts that Peter had and they had, and Jesus had money in the fish mouth. Jesus was showing Peter, I got power over financial water spirits. What are financial water spirits? These are demonic fallen angels that are part of your financial demise so that you won't be able to keep your head above water financially. Supernatural provision is moving towards you this day. All financial stress and unrest is going to bow its knee to King Jesus' system operating through you. Financial water spirits. Jesus said something powerful uh, to the disciples. He said there was many widows um, during the time of Elijah, but only to the woman at Zarephath was he sent. So Jesus was saying, this woman had a destiny in heaven that the father said, I'm not, I know everybody's suffering, but her. I'm going to reveal to her the power she carries. That she has authority over famine. I'm not going to let her go out like the other widows. I'm going to open up her eyes to her inheritance. Says so this mighty. This is mighty. Now watch this. Look, look at this, people of God. In 1 Kings chapter 17, verse 8, it says, And the word of the Lord came unto Elijah, saying, Arise, get thee to Zarephath, which belongeth to Zidon, Zidon and dwell there. Behold, watch this, I have commanded a widow woman there to sustain thee. Now look at this. I want you to hear me. Listen to me. I'm showing you how to be a multimillionaire. I'm showing you how to walk in wealth and riches. This woman was commanded by the Lord and still was unconscious of the command. Look, but, but watch this here. Now, now let's go to verse 10. So he arose and went to Zarephath, and when he came to the gate of the city, behold, the widow woman was there gathering sticks, and he called to her and said, Fetch me, I pray thee, a little water in a vessel that I may drink. And as she was going to fetch it, he called to her again and said, Bring me a morsel of bread in thine hand. Let's go to verse 12. 
And she said, as the Lord God liveth, I have not cake, but a handful of meal. I am gathering two sticks that I may go in, cook it, and me and my son that we may eat it and die. So where was the commandment? Let's hop back before she just finished talking. The Bible says the Lord told Elijah, I have commanded a widow woman there to sustain thee. You see, this woman is broke because her soul broke. And you say, what you mean by broke? Satan was able to break up her consciousness of God's commandments. God told Elijah, I have commanded her. When Elijah went to talk to her, she ain't got no idea what, oh, oh, I ain't got nothing for you. What you talking about? Huh? What? But the commandment that God was giving her that she unconscious of got all her money in it. Got her restoration in it. Got her wealth in it. Got her blessings in it. Now, saints, what was God telling this woman to take care of the prophet? And then now today, when you talk about taking care of the prophet, people act like you're preaching a new doctrine, like you're trying to get over on them. This is a biblical law. God had this woman hold destiny in making sure Elijah was good. All of her pleasures was hidden in pleasure in Elijah. Now, God had commanded her to do this. But she's unconscious and disconnected from the commandment. Hereby, she's also disconnected from the rewards of this commandment. She poor. She going through financial water spirits drowning her. These financial water spirits taking a toll on not only her, but on her son. Her son going through it. Her son ain't got nothing. So not only is the altar of Satan moving on her, but it's also moving on her seed. Elijah has been sent into this woman life to train her how to sow seed into him. He is her answer to all of her prayers. The mystery of a prophet is that when you talk to God about stuff that you need to change, he going to come to you in the form of a prophet of God. And God will say, I hear all your distress, but me first. I know that you going through pain because you, you, you oh, 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 oh. I know, I know, baby. It's okay. It's like, I know, baby. But me first. I know that you've been rejected. You don't know. I, I, I whoop the whoop. But me first. Elijah. Is really God looking at this woman in her face and saying, duh, 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 duh. You ain't got enough, duh. You, you ain't got, duh. This your last meal, duh, 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 duh. I already know that. You're not informing me, duh. Yeah, duh, duh, duh. duh. Elijah is not there to have sympathy with her demonic hindered life. Elijah is there to introduce her to her greatness, the greatness she don't know about. And her greatness is in sowing and reaping.
Every woman wants money. But very rarely will you ever see a woman that has a money mantle on her. When I say she got a money mantle, I don't mean physical money. I mean she got money mantle. She got wisdom from the Holy Ghost on what activities have her money in it. This woman right here, she want the money, she want the provision, but she don't want the mantle. Elijah showing her the mantle of sowing. Everything that she dreaming about, design, she want to take care of her son. She want to make sure her and her son got a good life. But Elijah saying, this don't come just by you dreaming about it. You got to honor God through a person that he sent to you. Saints, I want to say something to you that's real powerful. The ravens got the prophet's reward faster than the woman at Zarephath. Birds discern Elijah faster than humans. Whoa. Birds discern Elijah's mantle of multiplication, his mantle to, to increase his investors, those that took care of him, those that saw him. The birds had more revelation, more faith, more sea faith than humans. Elijah was sent to multiply this woman, but she had to learn how to sow. Supernatural money cometh through a seed trainer. When you have a prophetic anointing, you're discerned seed to sow. God will put money in your hand somehow, some way, and you'll have a chance to sow. Even people that's lying, they'd be like, you know, I wish I could sow by God. God will slip some money in your hand somehow. The kingdom system is an unselfish system. It's where you push somebody above your own agenda, your own vision, your own desires. And when you do this, the Lord releases his glory for you to reap it back double, triple. The measurements change in its size according to the sower. So if the sower is a, a big sower, the, the reaping is big, it's grand. And it's more enormous than what they sowed. The seed is God's power being released on the earth so that every good and perfect thing could access you without financial water spirits hindering it. Financial water spirits will block off provisions, plans, and events that's supposed to take place for you simply because you have not received and embraced the sowing anointed. Non-sowers are the most selfish people on earth. Every dollar they get is for them. It's never for God's kingdom. A non-sower does not respect God's presence and greatness in the earth realm. A sower is a person that has slowed down to acknowledge the Lord Jesus as king of the earth. This woman at Zarephath did not know how to acknowledge the presence of God, but she wanted a miracle from God. Financial water spirits were governing both her and her son. 
both her and her son was drowning in the sea of demons. Elijah was the only person on earth, a man that could set her free from this prison of provision. Elijah didn't look at this woman and say, let's pray together for a miracle. He told the woman, give me what you possess. Elijah didn't say, come on, let's inquire of God and see what God going to tell us. You got to understand the midst of a prophet. The prophet is not inquiring to God to find out what God wants you to do. The prophet is coming as God to tell you what to do that works. Elijah didn't say one time, come on, let's touch and agree. Father, I touch and agree that this woman will come out of her problems. He gave her an instruction. The instruction of a prophet is supernatural money. You switch the angels that are encamping around you. This woman went from financial water spirits to financial angels of Elijah. Elijah's abundance angels was now with this woman. The transaction didn't happen through prayer. It happened through sowing. That's why many people will never live the life that they're supposed to live because they think that everything that you get from God is through a prayer. When everything you get from God is through an instruction and his instructions will always kill you from self-centeredness. God's instruction will always target that selfish nature. This woman's seed brought her into an invisible economy simply because she took care of her prophet. The prophet's reward is for those that can recognize who the prophet is. Even when the prophet is laughing and talking with you, you can recognize this is my path to come out of my financial troubles. Whenever somebody got a financial trouble, the prophet going to sit right there and look you right in your face. When, when, when anybody going through something, you whether you going through sickness or anything, the prophet going to come somehow, whether through your phone, whether through YouTube, whether through, you, going to sit right there and look at you right in your face while you going through your stuff. Or pray for me, pray for me, pray for me. That's somebody that can't recognize the prophet. This woman wasn't called to pray for Elijah, fast for Elijah. In this moment, she was called and commanded to feed him, to sow into him, to bless him. Imagine this whole Woman's inheritance was in sowing consecutively into Elijah. He said, give me some water, sown seed. Give me some bread, give me some food, sown seed. Elijah is training her how to live on top of the financial water spirit. Elijah was not sent to cry tears with this woman. He was not sent to pit a blame game and cause this woman to become bitter with people that didn't help her. That wasn't his job. His job was just to be her soul. And if she truly wanted deliverance, not just financially, mentally, 
physically, emotionally, she was going to have to sow. If she didn't want it, she just go like everybody else, dig with the prophet, move on with her life. But this woman was destined for abundance, wealth, riches. Look what Elijah said in verse 13. Fear not. Why did he tell this woman to fear not? Because fear is the major demon that stops people from sowing. Fear is why people quench the spirit. And fear is a jail cell for selfishness. When someone is in fear, they don't listen to God. They try to protect themselves. And they protect themselves without the Lord that could protect them. They try to provide for themselves without the Lord that wants to provide for them. They try to bless themselves without the Lord that has the blessing that makes you rich and has no sorrow. So watch this here. He tells her, fear not, go and do. See, a lot of people go, but they don't do. You go say, you know, I know I'm supposed to sow, but you never do it. He told her, go and do. Look what the prophet's saying. Don't just make no promise. Don't just say that you're about to. Go and do. Look at this here. He said, but make me thereof a little cake first. And bring it unto me. And after make for thee and for thy son. Look what Elijah's saying. The provision you got. Is not about you. It's about me. This is the word, man. You trying to live this life that God has for you is not about you. You try. You think it as in your saving wisdom. You think it is in your investment wisdom, your stock wisdom, all this stuff. And Elijah said, "Pick me first, and they'll go handle your winky dinky situation." But pit me first. See, now you understand why not every woman is carrying a money cometh mantle. Now you know why every man not carrying a money cometh mantle. Because for you to even wear money cometh correctly, divinely, apostolically and prophetically, the spirit on purpose going to minister seed for you to sow and see if you're going to eat the seed. And if you eat the seed, guess what happened? All your financial problems are going to keep on being infiltrated and influenced by these financial water spirits. It don't matter how much you pray, you can haka chaka, chaka laka, shaka kaka, shaka khan. You can rub crystal balls. Uh, 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 Buddha bellies. You can get all type of sprays. Shoot, you can cut your hair off. Talking about you bald head. You removing all the financial energy from darkness away from your life. You could do all these schemes that this generation that we live in be trying to tell you will work. The other day, I was looking at somebody. They cut all their hair off. God said, look at this crazy heifer. Look how Satan got. Look, look how Satan got these women. Look, it started off with Eve. Look at these crazy heifers cutting their hair off. Bald head. Look like a man. Uh, I'm cleansing myself of energies. I don't want no energies. Crazy, crazy, crazy. When you're a man of the spirit, you don't even look at women the way that the natural man look at women. You don't look at men the way that natural men look at men. 
You look at people from the lens of the spirit and you see their insanity. You see their demons. You see how the enemy able to laugh at them and make them look like a fool, a plum fool. And these women supposed to really be walking with the Lord. That's why they're alive. But they choose Satan and Satan got them looking like a fool. Saints, when you look at a woman in the spirit, you'll recognize how her eyes are super big. <laughs> there was a woman that, that, that people might consider her look pretty. I saw a picture of that woman the other day. I saw her eye look all big. She looked cock a doodle doo eyed it and stuff. She looked like two squirrels that was malfunctioned. All type of stuff. I don't know what you look at them, you're like, what what do you see? When you serve Satan, Satan will make you ugly. That's what we don't talk about. That you 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 serve saying for long enough, look how ugly you start looking. Saints, one time I saw an R and B sing singer that they considered sexy, and the R and B singer, when I looked at him, he looked like one of them. <laughs> he looked like one of them mechanics that used to work on my old car a long time ago, years ago. <laughs> I looked at, I said. This look like a mechanic. <laughs> they, uh, you, <laughs> they used to call him Lucius. You know that mechanics, they always got slave names. Lucius, Elroy. I looked over, I'm like, I said, well, am, I, am I missing something? I, if, he, if he had looked all right, I would have thought about it, but I would agree. But he looked like one of the Mechanics that used to, <laughs> used to work on the transmission that ain't had no teeth up here. That was eating his cold sandwich on one side of his mouth. Cause that old, that whole side was full of sugar dot beans. <laughs> you, you, <laughs> you know when that mouth full of sugar diabetes, you know what that means? That they ate sweets all the time. Some of y'all that like eating sweets, that's how you go, yeah, yeah, yeah. You are look like this here, yeah, you're funny. When you get to the age of 40, that's how you're going to be talking. You call it, call it, call it, call it, call it. The cop going to think you disrespecting them. Okay, Ma'am, can I see your license and registration? I can, I, 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 I. Ma'am, put your hands on the dash. I <laughs> Ma'am, put your hands on the dash. I said I need... I... I you trying to shoot me? Man, uh, man, I need backup. I need backup. She's trying to pull out a trigger. She's trying to pull out a trigger and shoot us. I know. She's throwing up gang signs. She's throwing up gang signs. Coming, cold, cold, cold red, cold blue, cold blue, cold blue, cold, height, a height, height. Some of you young people don't understand by the time you get to the age of 30 something, your teeth crank out like a transmission if you're eating sweets. Now, Cletus, I know it tastes good today, but when you get over 30, your teeth, just like the engine in the car, Since the other day, you, you go to the dentist, you see how people in there, they be up there getting mad at the dentist. The dentist show them, ma'am, you got to take this tooth out. You need, you need cold red right here. This, this is this teeth right here. This look like, this look like Tyson right here. This teeth right here look like DC Young Fly. Saints. They show them the screen up there, the screen up there. Then, then, then the people be up there giving big, deep breaths inside the seat. Oh, man. Oh. Since one time I went to the dentist, one time I went to the dentist, this was years ago. And when I went to the dentist, there was a man, he, he was inside the lobby. He was acting like he was thugging. Doesn't matter. Nah, dog. Nah, dog. I'm good. I'm good. When he got to the seat, that man...
They called all type of people back there to try to comfort that man. <laughs> but come to find out, they had to deal all type of his upper levels, his lower levels. He had a whole garage, an old deteriorated garage in his mouth. The upper level, he was in there crying out. Saints, <laughs> when he had to get out, when he was ready to leave, I heard him asking the doctor, is, 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 is that young boy still out here? That young boy out there? He didn't want me to see him walk out because he was screaming like that. So I went go whisper to the nurse. I said, I said, tell him I ain't here. Tell him I'm, yeah, tell, tell him I'm gone. <laughs> so the nurse had him. He came out. <laughs> he came out. He thought he was in the room all by himself. He was up there walking all confident. I turned over and looked. <laughs> that man didn't want to stay there for one man. That man got out of Dodge real quick. You would think that TMZ cameras was in there. He didn't want to be seen. That's what the young folk don't understand. Your teeth got a duration. There's people right now, I don't matter how cute they is, and son, don't be concerned. Some of the cutest women... They be the one eating their cold sandwich on one side of their mouth. You know why? Because they got a spirit of snacking and shacking. <laughs> I'm not going to talk about the shacking. They're the wrong sweets. Yeah. Some of the finest women you think exist in your life, you find out how they eat their cold sandwich. They eat their apple in the middle of their mouth because all their corners are shackled. You know, man, man says, take them shackles off my feet so I could dance. They got shackles all on the corners of their mouth. They eat that thing just in the middle of their mouth. You ever seen somebody eating a food that's supposed to go to the corners, but they, they chucking it in the middle of their mouth? You ever seen somebody cut up their food in pieces? <laughs> You're like, hey, this is supposed to be bigger than this. Why are you cutting it up like that in small pieces like there's a baby in the room? Why, why are you cutting up real small? Some of the prettiest women in the world got the worst tephuses because they like snacking and shacking. Saints, look what Elijah said right here in 1 Kings chapter 17. Look what he said right here in verse um, 13. He said, bring it unto me, then you'll bring it to yourself and your son. Verse 14 says, for thus saith the Lord, the barrel of meal shall not waste. Neither shall the cruise of oil fail until the day that the Lord sendeth rain upon the earth. And she went and did according to the saying of Elijah. See, the person that you sowing into is also going to be saying to you. The person that you're sowing into will also be saying to you. But your sowing is your part of the communication. That's how you communicate your part by sowing. And she and he and her house did eat many days. Look at this, people of God. Look, look what it says right here. They ate for many days. Are you seeing this? They ate for many days. That's long provision. It didn't say that they ate for some days. It says they ate for many days. That means that the money just kept on coming. That means that the provision kept on coming. But you see what she had to do? 
go past her selfishness, her fears, and so into Elijah. And this is where on the other side of her seed was harvests that was locked up because it was in Elijah. Many people will never live the life that God has for them because they think that is in their prayer. Oh, Lord, I know, Lord, I receive what you got for me. You ain't received nothing. You ain't received the prophet. You think God going to let your, 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 your disrespectful self enter into abundance without trying your heart underneath authority? You think that he want a ratchet hood rat to be carrying his wealth that ain't got no training, no manners, no kingdom test? God's smart. He pit you underneath authority on earth. See if you're going to sow. And then he'd start trusting you with that large money. He ain't going to put no large money in your hand for you up there. You, you already got demon spirits that's hiding in your being, hiding around your environment you don't know about. No, he try you. He going to pit a prophet and say, if you receive the prophet in the name of a prophet, you'll receive the prophet's reward. If you believe the prophet, so shall you prosper. That's how he does. And many people be up there talking to the Lord, I receive. So what have you received? Because they don't work like that, baby. If you receive, you'll also perceive when the man of God come to you and you'll treat them accordingly. One thing that I want to magnify is that in verse 14 it says, neither shall the cruise of oil fail. The cruise of oil is really the oil that's on the sowing anointing, the principle, and on the soul, which is Elijah. So when he said the cruise of oil, there, there's a cruise of oil. The cruise of oil is in the seed principle, but it's also in the soul that you're sowing into. Wow. He Notice what he said, the cruise of oil will not fail. Meaning that what God is requesting to be done here. The effectiveness and the rewards and the harvests for doing it will get to you without any hindrance because she was destroying financial water spirits with her seed. 